now in this case you can see the capacitors are splitted you have the inductor as the same so it is nothing but split capacitor oscillator similarly here again the capacitors are splitted and in the series with the inductor you have one capacitor so the name for this split capacitor is Colpitt's oscillator and for this it is clap oscillator so this is how we have different types of oscillators the basic circuit is you have a capacitor and a inductor so depending on the frequencies and different types splitting the capacitor splitting the inductor we have different names for the oscillators right now coming to the basic lc oscillator configuration uh, whatever circuit you get in the exam or any type of oscillator you can see the basic steps for lc oscillators will be the same just you need to substitute certain values in the equation suppose say in the feedback you have z1 z2 z3 now z1 can be a impedance of a capacitor or an inductor z2 can be a capacitor or inductor impedance similarly z3 can be c or l so what you can see different types you have hartley oscillator colpitt's oscillator so depending on the oscillators you can have l or c in place of z1 and z2 so what we can do we can derive a generalized equation and for all the oscillators we can just substitute wherever you have c we'll substitute xc or you can say z for the capacitor and z for the inductor now in this circuit if i open this feedback loop how this circuit will look like it will look like this we are opening the feedback loop and the initial circuit was we are opening the feedback so here you had z2 here you had z1 and the z3 this was the circuit which is redrawn as shown over here now what you can say the voltage across this was vf or the feedback voltage voltage across z2 and this is your view so which you can see over here z and emitter this is your emitter base and collector what you can say vo is connected between emitter and z1 is connected between e and vo so that is you can say here this is e this is vo between that you have z1 other terminal of z1 is connected to z3 which you can see here other terminal of z3 is connected to z2 and you don't have any connection between this so this two come in series and z2 other terminal is connected to the emitter so this is how this diagram is reconstructed from this diagram now we can calculate zl as total resistance seen from this side z2 plus z3 both are in series they will come in parallel with z1 so that will be z1 into z2 plus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 so this is the load resistance zl